salads, uh, they're not as simple as you might think. Or, yeah, I guess they are, <laughs> because they go with every meal, every day part. You can use just about every ingredient to make one. So make it as simple or as complicated as you'd like, because a great salad is healthy, it's tasty, it gives you heatless cooking when the kitchen can get really hot. We're going to talk about cool summer salads today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. This is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, the insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you're looking for past videos, go to facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. You can see the archive there. Here's our live schedule for the summer, Tuesdays like we are today at noon, and Thursdays we'll be cooking outdoors at 6 p.m. and some other surprise times also. And I get around to posting something on Instagram again. <laughs> you'll you'll see it at Instagram.com slash Chef Todd Moore. Why? Because I'm a carefree cook. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods. I wind up loving my cooking, and that's really why we get together on Tuesdays. And now you're going to see me get even more and more excited. I'm here in my new home, more farm stands, more fresh ingredients. And the weather is improving for us consistently here in the northern hemisphere. The days are getting longer. The sun is getting sunnier, uh, and my food is getting lighter. Uh, but look, don't think of a salad as just a bowl of lettuce. That's what most people think of. There are all kinds of salads, and we're going to find some new ones to bring into your kitchen today, some new ideas. But first, I've got a true or false for you here. Tell me in the comments section below, is this statement true or false? Lettuce should be torn by hand, not cut with a knife to avoid brown edges. Have you ever heard you're supposed to rip lettuce? Is that statement true or false? Tell me in the comments section below. It's June 1st. <laughs> Happy June 1st, everyone. That means summer is uh, right behind it, coming along quickly. You remember summer, right? Yeah, there was no summer in 2020. We just skipped it. We, we all stayed inside. But if you think back to 2019, you might remember what summer, S-U-M-M, summer, what summer was. It, 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 let me refresh your memory. It's where you cook outside, right? It's where you get together with other people. You remember other people. Let's hear it for other people. Yeah. Um, it's really the time where you don't want to heat up your kitchen. It, it's not that the time for heavy stews, for, for roasts, for, for casseroles. It, it, it's time for lighter food, brighter colors, fresher foods. I think happier food, to be honest with you, and that means salad. Now, look, if you're a big burly dude and you're like, oh, I don't eat salads, or you're just anybody that doesn't eat salads, just stick with me for a few minutes because we're going to find ways for you to like salads. We're going to talk about entree salads. We're, we're, once you know the different classifications of salads, once you know the three basic parts of any salad, once you know the hundred plus <laughs> varieties of the most important ingredient in salad, then we talk about how to assemble a salad. It all becomes a little bit more exciting than cooking. It does. Open your mind to this for the new summer and you'll start to change Change your cooking for a new season with fresh new ingredients and maybe even new methods too because what we really want to talk about today is summer salads. It's what I call summer salad days. Where is it? 
There it is, summer salad, summer salad days. And what, what it is, is a choice for you in between heatless cooking versus a heat-filled kitchen because we're shooting for cool and healthy summer meals. This is the idea. And, and again, if you, if you love your beef stroganoff in the winter, maybe it's time to look at something that emulates that but is a little lighter and takes a little less heat. Okay, so that, that's my goal today is to help you with these things because salads... There's a slide, there we go, can be any kind of composed item. And the definition of a salad is any single food or mix of different foods accompanied or bound by a dressing. You can have a hamburger salad if you want, a steak salad, whatever your favorite ingredient is, you can certainly make a salad out of it instead of roasting it in the oven. So a salad can contain just about anything that you find in your kitchen, meat, grains, fruits, nuts, cheese, lettuce, or absolutely no lettuce at all. It can be an appetizer. It can be a second course. It can be an entree course. It can be served after the entree. It can be a dessert course. It's dramatic the where you can fit a salad. But the thing to remember is if, if you want to make it more than just a pile of lettuce, the color, the texture, the flavor of each of the ingredients, if you want to get good at that, they need to complement each other. And the dressing that you use should complement all the other ingredients. Maybe one of the reasons that you don't like salads is because you put really heavy buttermilk ranch dressing on it and you cannot taste anything but buttermilk ranch. Maybe maybe you're putting a very heavy blue cheese dressing and, and all those natural ingredients aren't coming through. It, harmony is, is really what we're going to talk about. Harmony is critical to the salad success. No matter what type of salad it is, it has got to live in harmony with the other ingredients. Chickpeas, avocados, go with cilantro and red onion. You start to use your profiles. But really, if you want to start creating your own salads, they are classified by the predominant ingredient. So, a green salad, right? So you can think of any mixture of greens that you can put together and you've got a typical salad. And I'm gonna go over uh, about a dozen different types of lettuce in about 10 minutes or so, you wanna stick around for that, uh, so that you can start to use lettuce as a better ingredient also. Green salad, our first category. The second category of salads, Come on, slides, there we go. Protein salads, vegetable salads, and also bound salads and fruit salads. So when you start thinking about the different ways that you can use just about anything in your pantry, it doesn't need to be a whole mix of lettuce, right? A gorgeous Capri salad is just sliced tomato, mozzarella, and uh, uh, basil leaves. But now, if you're not gonna think about classifying a salad by its predominant ingredient, why don't you just take what you like to eat and classify it by the course that they're gonna serve. So I know if you've ever been to a restaurant, <laughs> and it's been a long time, I just went to two recently. First two restaurants I've been to in a year. Nonetheless, uh, you probably get an appetizer salad before your main entree, and the appetizer salad is really meant to stimulate the palate, to stimulate the appetite, to, to stimulate the eye. And a lot of times the dressings are very acidic, the dressings have vinegar in it. This again, to stimulate your tongue. But the thing is your appetizer salad should not be too heavy. It should not be too filling. Again, I'm gonna beat up on the but buttermilk ranch and the blue cheese dressing. This is a bad way to start a meal, coating your tongue in fat and dairy. Uh, there are accompaniment salads that go along with your entree and they really function as a side dish. I think it's a really good idea to either put a mixed green salad or a potato salad or a pasta salad or a three bean salad or a four grain salad or a broccoli raisin salad. Use that as a cold side dish next to what you're grilling instead of having to make rice on the stove or, or something like that. Uh, consider a main course salad. This is where I'm talking to my, my buddies out here. If you're a big burly guy, like I said, and you're like, oh, salads are rabbit food, how about putting some steak on it? You know, how about taking the ingredients that you want, to contain, uh, put proteins on there, put grains, make, make rice and barley and, and brown rice and all the things that you like, just throw it together and call it a salad. Don't worry, nobody's gonna criticize you. 
Uh, there are also after course salads. These are the salads that are meant to cleanse the palate afterward. It's a very European style to serve a salad after you've had your main entree. And of course there are dessert salads and they're a little bit sweeter. They have fruit and nuts and greens. So there is barely a part of the day that you can't figure out how to put something that is heatless cooking into your diet and just call it a salad. It is not just chopped up iceberg lettuce. It can be a composed salad, just a slice of avocado, a slice of tomato, a, a little bit of cheese. It doesn't need to be, again, tossed lettuce. And that brings me to the next point is the salad arrangement and the presentation. A lot of people don't like salads because they look so boring. Iceberg lettuce with just a slice of tomato is not exciting enough to get you going. A cheese steak looks much better to me than that. But if you start to think about arranging and presenting the salad, you'll start thinking about the three basic parts of any salad. So if you wanna compose something that looks really nice, start with a base or an underliner. Now, this can be anything from leafy greens that, that uh, have shredded or maybe torn with your hands, maybe cut with a knife. We'll, we'll see what the true false says at the end today. Um, but how about a, like a, a Belgian endive cup? How about a red radicchio cup? How about butter lettuce laid on the plate? Romaine lettuce. I served this weekend, had friends over. I served a, a chicken salad. It was a, a lemon dill chicken salad along with an Asian uh, shrimp salad, uh, like sweet Thai chili shrimp salad. And I have white plates. Well, just putting chicken salad, white chicken salad down on a white plate, it just doesn't look very good. So I use, I have a green leaf, green leaf, red leaf, and a red romaine lettuce. And I just kind of laid leaves out on the table. So get yourself an underliner because the underliner really adds to the appearance of everything. The underliner is another plate, another frame. So it also gives height. To, to your salad. Anything that's coming up at the diner, a little bit of height, not everything needs to be stacked. That was a, a trend in the mid 90s, but something that gives height. A flat, wide salad is not as appealing as a higher salad, but the thing that the underliner also does, it can confine a lot of loose pieces, the, the garbanzo beans, the, the, the nuts that you put on the salad. So as I mentioned, uh, iceberg cups, Boston lettuce, endive cups, things like that. A tossed salad really has no base. The, the, the salad itself is the base, but we're gonna learn about some of the other parts of a salad also, because once you've got that underliner now, What's the body of your salad? What, what is the, the main part of the salad? Is it a chicken salad, a shrimp salad, a toss salad, a tomato salad, a, a, a broccoli salad? The, the important thing about salads is that number one, you have to use the freshest ingredients because the flavors do not change with cooking. You are not applying heat to any of this and that's the purpose, heatless cooking, right? Plus knife skills are an imperative. These things are not gonna change their shape from cooking. So how you cut those tomatoes into consistent pieces is important. And remember, consistency of cut is consistency of cook. And especially here where the items will not be cooked. They will not be changing color. They will not be changing texture. They will not be changing shape. And not only that, but with heat, very often things get sweeter. Think about garlic, roast garlic, it gets sweeter. Cooked tomatoes, they get a little sweeter, but when it's raw, you can't make that tomato any sweeter than it already is. So knife skills and freshest ingredients are really important for the body of your salad. Then, what's gonna speak to the diner? What What is special about this? What are you gonna use as a garnish? And a garnish is the thing that gives your salad the eye appeal. It communicates really the type of salad that you're making to the diner. And this is an opportunity with a garnish to add color, to, to add texture, to add flavor. And what I mean by garnish is uh, something like croutons. Right? You're not making a crouton salad. It's, a, it's not a bread salad. The croutons are added afterward because you look at them and you go, wow, that's crunchy. Wow, that's brown and caramely. That's quite a contrast from the soft lettuce and the tomatoes. I like almonds on my salad, crushed nuts. How about the contrast of like red pepper strips, green pepper strips? But here's the thing, keep it simple. 
Don't don't overdo it and don't ever try and garnish with something again that is not in the food or in the salad. It should never overshadow the body of the salad. So here is my salad. It is made up of these two or three different lettuces with strips of steak, crumbled blue cheese, uh, a vinaigrette dressing, and then I'm going to put either uh, bits of blue cheese or almonds on there or strips of red pepper to contrast and highlight because here, here's something, here, here's an idea. <laughs> here's something that you may not have considered and I want you to consider this. It's the fact that lettuce has flavor. Different lettuces have different flavors and here is the main reason that you hate salads is because you got bad lettuce. It's like saying I eat bad steaks all the time and I don't like beef. Choose your lettuce like any other ingredient. They all have different flavors. Some lettuce is a little bit more bitter. Some lettuce is a little bit more sweet. Some lettuce is softer in texture. Some lettuce is harder in texture. The type of lettuce that you choose can complement, contrast, or take away from the body of the salad. So let's go over a few uh, that you see in your stores and some that I can recommend for you today. Let's start with your basic iceberg lettuce. The iceberg lettuce is flavorless. It is pretty much all water. It, it, it's not, it, Shredded iceberg lettuce is good maybe for tacos, that kind of thing, but really best for an underliner, best shredded and laid in the bottom of a glass where you put uh, like a poached shrimp for your shrimp cocktail on, that kind of thing. All right, romaine lettuce. Let's talk about romaine. This is a much harder lettuce. It has those stocky ribs down the middle of it, right? Also very good for an underliner. The, the example that I just told you, how I put uh, shrimp salad and, and uh, chicken salad f uh, that would have been on a white plate, put it on a romaine underliner. underliner. And of course, uh, romaine lettuce imperative for Caesar salad, but it's a good contrast when mixed with other lettuces. One of my favorite is a Boston lettuce or a bib lettuce. It's really soft. It's very sweet. They come out to these nice little cups, again, that are good presentation, good underliners. It can soften the texture of your salad. It, 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 when you take some of these other scraggly, bitter lettuces and you add a soft in texture, sweeter lettuce, you start making a really nice salad. Speaking of a contrast to Boston lettuce, Frise. Frise is one of my favorite lettuces because it's very bitter. I like bitter lettuces. It has really scraggly leaves. It it kind of kind of looks like a weed or a dandelion that you would pull pull out of your garden, but the bitter flavor balances sweeter dressing. So here's one of the answers that if you light it like a sweet dressing, a sweet Vidalia onion dressing, a, a, a sweeter buttermilk ranch, that kind of thing. Don't use flavorless lettuces, use bitter pronounced lettuces on a sweeter dressings and you'll get a better contrast. Speaking of bitter, arugula. Arugula is a much rougher, bitter, darker flavor. Now I'm not saying make an entire salad out of frise and arugula unless you like really bitter things, but you're using lettuce as an ingredient the way that you would any other ingredients if you were cooking. Pe this doesn't dawn on people for some reason. They say if I make a, a, a salad, I use one kind of lettuce and it's usually iceberg and then tomatoes and cucumbers. And think about this, how flavorless are iceberg lettuce and cucumbers? It's, it's not very exciting, but when you take a soft, sweet lettuce, a bitter lettuce, something like arugula, which, which can, again, can balance some of the sweeter lettuces. Uh, radicchio, if you wanna add color to your salad, it's a harder red lettuce, a little closer to cabbage in texture. But the, the idea is that some shredded red lettuce lettuce in your salad gives you a contrast of color as well as the contrast of flavor. Mash. Look for mash in your grocery store. It's a sweet clover looking thing, real small, tiny little leaves, but it's so soft and, and just got a little bit of snap to it kind of thing. And, and just when you put two or three of these different lettuces together or go ahead and explore about a hundred more different kinds of lettuces. But my message to you is if you hate salads, it's because you've been treating the salad really badly. 
but a combination. Seek out different lettuces. Think about your garnish, something that's going to contrast in color, something that'll contrast in texture. And then you can start to look into international salads as well. The same way you have burrito night or taco night or pizza night, how about a French salad that would include ingredients excuse me, fre uh, fresh niçois type ingredients, carrots, and maybe a little tuna and uh, sprouts, things like that. A Greek salad with red onion, olives, uh, feta, little cherry tomatoes. I know you can pull that off. An Italian salad could have artichoke hearts and uh, uh, hard boiled eggs and an Italian dr uh, dressing, a vinaigrette with uh, uh, oregano and basil. Uh, how about a Japanese salad? Maybe that would use the little mandarin orange slices. I don't particularly like them, uh, but almonds, uh, a sesame uh, oil based dressing, shredded carrots, some ginger in there, uh, uh, some soy, uh, maybe some uh, tofu. Uh, the Asian salad with a <laughs> the very stereotypical mandarin uh, orange slices, but a little bit more spinach in that as well. A Russian salad is going to be a composed mayonnaise-based salad where things are, are cubed. Uh, then you got your protein salads. Make yourself a chicken salad. How about a grains salad? Brown rice, peas, uh, black beans, quinoa, barley. Make all those things, toss them together with a salad dressing. Then when you're done, you can have your fruit salad of blackberries and blueberries and kiwis and it's endless. And look, no matter what salad that you dream up, just remember some of these categories of salads because they will help you invent the next one. What function are they forming in your salad? How are they serving to contrast the color, the texture, the flavor of your salad? And then what will make up the underliner that you're going to use, what's going to be the body of the salad that you're going to use, what you're going to use as the garnish to contrast flavor and texture, but all with the freshest ingredients because those are the things that you need with the most appealing knife skills because your knife skills are going to be on display as well. There it is. And your most appealing knife skills because that stuff is on display. Again, these items aren't cooked. So my message to you today is don't worry about heating up your oven. I mean, when you think about how hot your kitchen gets in the summer, how you start to heat up the whole house with the oven, just preheating it, you may start to look at ways to use these salads. They don't have to have lettuce, but if they do, make it a combination of interesting lettuces. Then use the ingredients that you might have put in the oven anyway and try and see if you can make something cooler. And you'll start to look at cool summer salads as a new way to eat, as a way to make your, uh, your summer meals lighter, healthier, cooler this year. That's the idea. Let's uh, take a look into our Carefree Cooks community, a, a, uh, an entire group of about 18,000 lifetime members of web cooking classes. Let's see how their cooking is changing for the season now also. Oh, Nora, I was just mentioning this, Nora has a taco night, taco salad night, nice international ingredients, great presentation. I don't see what's wrong uh, with that. <laughs> with instead of the hot pizza night, make it a cool taco night. Uh, Cheryl has her version uh, of Southwest chicken salad. She uses green leaf lettuce, some spinach, cilantro, uh, onions, cucumbers, tomatoes, black beans, sweet corn, uh, avocado, and uh, she said she made a chili lime uh, seasoning tossed in olive oil and some blue cheese. That's a lot, a lot of flavor going on there. That is a salad. If you don't like salads, look at something like that with like 12 different ingredients. Uh, Danielle is using it as an accompaniment salad. She made this nice looking lobster roll with a pasta salad on the side. And she knows, Danielle knows the secret to a good pasta or potato salad. It's the goop, right? You, you always make your goop first, taste your goop, unless there's raw egg, taste your goop, and then you go ahead with your salad. But her goop is Worcestershire sauce, tomato paste, mayonnaise, thyme, cayenne, white pepper, and lemon. Sounds like a good goop for just about any salad. And here, here's one of the best parts of being a carefree cook, I gotta tell you. When I hear stories about like this, it, it is the ability to recreate the restaurant dishes and most of the time make them even better than the restaurant. So Karen contributed to our Carefree Cooks community. She told this story. She wanted to emulate a shrimp dish 
that she had in a Mediterranean restaurant. So she asked the chef at the restaurant if he would share her uh, his recipe with her. And he even shared his secret ingredient. So do you know what Karen then did? having been shared the secret ingredient with the chef. She came into our community and posted the secret for 18,000 people to see. That's not how you keep a secret, Karen. <laughs> it's a nice looking salad though, isn't it? Gorgeous salad with cured, uh, skewered shrimp uh, with bacon, really nice. Uh, Maureen knows how to use a salad as a side dish too. Here she's got her ribeye steaks. She's plating a simple garden salad with pine nuts and blue cheese dressing. But the exciting thing to me here is down on the bottom, that caprice salad on the side of the steak, a steak, right? You're gonna grill steaks this summer. Forget about the side dishes or the potatoes or the heavier things. How about a, a tomato, mozzarella cheese, basil? Put that on the grill. Let the mozzarella cheese melt a little bit. There's your side salad. It's awesome, right? Are you excited about salads yet? <laughs> Hopefully, because it's that time of year again. You're, you're uncovering the patio furniture. You're, you're changing the batteries in your smoke detector, but you've also got to change your cooking for a new season to something that's lighter, brighter, healthier, a lot more fun. Leave the stews, leave the chili, leave the casseroles behind because it's a whole new season of cooking and I am really, really excited about it. Uh, let's go back to the true or false today from the beginning of the show. Pardon me. True or false, lettuce should be torn by hand, not cut with a knife to avoid the brown edges. Yeah. Pardon me, uh, I'm sorry to tell you that's false. Cutting with a sharp knife is generally the most effective method. Tearing by hand usually requires squeezing and it's the squeezing that damages the tender leaves. This idea that you, you have to tear leaves because the knife does something worse. No, the, the browning of lettuce leaves are, are due to a reaction of what's called polyphenol, basically, when the, this enzyme in the lettuce is exposed to air. So cut it, tear it, either way it's gonna turn brown over a certain amount of time, it doesn't know. And look, if you know someone who's still cooking the same way, no matter what season it is, please like, love, share this video with them so they can change with the seasons like the rest of us do. And just like your wardrobe needs to change for summer, you're not wearing corduroy pants to the pool party, right? Well, your cooking needs to change for summer as well. And I'm going to help make it a lot easier by giving you the five changes I make to my cooking every summer season. They're in my latest free online class. It's called Summer Cooking is Cool. And if you go to webcookingclasses.com slash sun, you can see when the next classes are being held. So thanks for being with me again today, everyone. Uh, we will see you on Thursday at 6 p.m. for some more outdoor cooking. Until then, it's Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your coolest summer cooking success. Bye everyone.